For most of the length of the Delaware River, this body of water acts as a division between the states in the original American colonies of Pennsylvania and New Jersey. On December 25, 1776, one of the most important events in American military history would take place in the vicinity of this area on the Delaware River. General George Washington would lead the American Continental Army from Pennsylvania into New Jersey in the dead of the night on Christmas. Withstanding the freezing cold conditions with his element, Washington would touch down in Trenton in the following morning unsuspected by the Hessian troops who were led by Johann Rall. This surprise attack left the Hessian forces with 22 dead men and up to 900 men captured in the encounter that we now know as the Battle of Trenton. This battle would serve as a turning point in the American Revolution and would inspire more men to enlist in the efforts to serve this newly formed nation. This was largely due to General George Washington, who was highly regarded throughout history for his bravery and leadership. After the events of the American Revolutionary War, he would unanimously be elected as the inaugural president of the United States of America. I previously mentioned that the actions of Washington and his men by crossing the Delaware River would be considered one of the most important military events in American history. But if you want to know about the single most important event in American history to happen, you only need to go back in time by five months and about 33 miles south down the river. Here in Philadelphia, the Declaration of Independence was ratified by the Second Continental Congress on July 4, 1776, giving birth to the nation we now know as the United States of America. Philadelphia would have a strong influence on American culture for many years to come. Philadelphia, along with New York City, consistently remained in the top 10 rankings in population amongst American cities, dating all the way back to the 1700s. Philadelphia would become this place with its own unique culture that centered around the fact that it was the birthplace of the United States. Philadelphia had an identity and the city flourished for many years and continues to flourish today while it resides on the Pennsylvania side of the Delaware River. Standing opposite of Philadelphia on the Delaware River in New Jersey is Camden. It's a city with a rough history with a story that largely goes unheard because no one seems to care. For many years, this was the most dangerous city in the United States. Camden has always seemed like a lost cause. It has never gotten the same amount of love as a city of brotherly love. To understand how things got this way, we need to look at history. It will give us an idea as to why things are the way that they are. As opposed to making a video saying that this city is the crown jewel of all inner city ghettos, Camden, New Jersey, the flagship ghetto of all ghettos. It's America's ugliest face. Here's the rest of Camden, New Jersey, the absolute worst place you could ever live in the United States. And provide zero nuance to the discussion about why people still live here or fail to give any historical context. And on top of that, provide the route that you took that intentionally went through the worst sections of the city, showing people who are just trying to live a normal life while ignoring any attractions or revitalization efforts made by the city. And you didn't even try to provide commentary of any kind apart from the intro while you were driving through the neighborhoods either in your 24 minute video. It is also worth noting that your video is about neighborhoods stricken with poverty and the hardened people who live here, but here you are running ads on your video and making money off of people being poor. But in the end, I can't even be all that mad at this content creator. If you look on YouTube and put Camden in the search bar, it's nothing but crime, poverty, police activity, or the Camden High basketball team featuring DJ Wagner. Apart from a phenomenal basketball player with great potential, the city he hails from has none. When it comes to content creation on YouTube, why deviate from that narrative? To put it bluntly, no one cares about Camden. But why do I care? Am I from Camden? No, I'm not from Camden. In fact, I'm from Marlton. I grew up comfortably in an upper middle class to rich town surrounded by white people. It's the farthest thing from Camden socioeconomically, but it is within reach since it's about a 20 minute drive away. But I feel the need to make this video with the lack of nuance or history when discussing Camden here on YouTube. 
This is going to be a two part series. Part one is going to go over the history of Camden. Part two is going to be about the Camden River Sharks, a baseball team that was part of a revitalization effort to change the perception of the city when it saw an unprecedented amount of crime and poverty. I'm going to cover this team, their history, and the story of their city in this series. This is the history of Camden, New Jersey. Tonight, we begin with the poorest city in the nation and the most dangerous city all in the same place. It's Camden, New Jersey, right across from Philly. Camden is a city of 77,000, a place most people avoid or take pains to drive by, a place I... By the year 1700, European settlers, most notably Quakers, were residing within Camden and the surrounding South Jersey environment coexisting with the indigenous Lenape tribe. That is, until the settlers impeded the Lenape's land to include their woods, water, and natural resources that made living much more difficult for them. The Lenape were also introduced to alcohol and diseases that the settlers possessed. The Lenape population began to fall the numbers never seen before. That's because they were all gone. The number of Lenape in what was known as the Third Temp, which is modern day Camden County, plummeted down to zero. Around this time, there was another sect of Quakers in this area. No, they were not in South Jersey. Instead, they were on the other side of the Delaware River in Pennsylvania in Philadelphia, which quickly grew in population. To sustain this quality of life and trade between these two cities, separated by a body of water, ferries were introduced. And in the 1800s, the ferry business was booming, as it has connected Camden to other towns in South Jersey and Philadelphia. This generated a lot of business growth economically for the city as Camden was building up industries in a variety of fields to include lumber, horse-related products to include carriages, wagons, harnesses, and soup. Yes, soup. In 1869, a canned soup company was founded by Joseph A. Campbell. You now know this company as the Campbell Soup Company. Over the years, this company would grow immensely and become one of the largest food companies in the world. This was in large part due to their branding and their slick and stylish label design for their cans. Of course, this would later be popularized by Andy Warhol as part of his Campbell Soup Cans art collection. Campbell, being one of the largest food companies in the world, had a brand portfolio that included Pepperidge Farms, V8, and Swanson's. Business for Campbell's was booming. Their corporate headquarters was based in Camden along with their original production plant, which provided up to 1,000 jobs. Camden was a hotbed for generating sea vessels for the U.S. Navy, with the production coming from the New York Shipbuilding Corporation, a company which I'll also add isn't based in New York. The founders couldn't set up shop in New York and settled in Camden. Around 30,000 people worked here at its peak during World War II and was the largest and most productive shipyard in the world. Over the course of the company's lifespan, they produced over 500 vessels. The company supplying the materials for New York shipbuilding was named the Camden Forge Company because they were actually based in Camden and it actually made sense. The Camden Forge Company enjoyed a lot of success and met the demands of New York shipbuilding along with being a supplier for railroad construction. Another company that had an impact on Camden was the Victor Talking Machine Company. This was a music company that doubled as a recording company and a manufacturer. Now, what were they best known for producing? Phonographs. Yes, phonographs. It was the optimal way to listen to music in the early 20th century. Also, look at this little doggo who served as the mascot. Wanting to work for a company with an adorable mascot who has plans on monopolizing an industry seemed like a good idea to a lot of people especially since Victor was the largest manufacturer of phonographs in the world and produced 12,000 jobs. Things were going well in Camden, even in the wake of the Great Depression. It was a period where citizens struggled financially due to the economy falling apart and many people lost their jobs and sources of income. But Camden didn't have to bear the burden of instability that other cities were experiencing due to their industries. But companies were paying their workers in scrip because they couldn't pay a currency. Camden's industry and manufacturing due to Campbell's, New York Shipbuilding, Camden Forge, and Victor kept Camden booming during this rough economic time in American history. 
As mentioned before, with the U.S. involvement in World War II, it led to New York shipbuilding in Camden Forge into prosperous times and attracted many people to come to the city for employment. At its peak in 1950, Camden had a population of over 124,000. Unfortunately, this sustainability wouldn't last forever due to changes in industries. Because when you're at the top, there's only one way to go. What is this, some kind of magic act? After the 1950s, Camden saw a shift in her demographics racially. In 1950, 85% of Camden's population was white and 14% were black. Before, during, and after World War II, there were two separate great migrations taking place. For those that don't know what that is, it's a term used to characterize an era in which black people migrated from the southern United States to the north in response to the lack of opportunity with regards to employment, careers, and education provided towards blacks and other people of color in addition to Well, yeah, all of that stuff. The people migrating would travel northward cities with a lot of industrialization that were products of their era, like Detroit, Gary, Indiana, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, to include Camden. Over the time, the black population would rise and the white population would fall. You went over why the black population increased, but why did the white population decrease? Well, in 1961, in nearby Cherry Hill, the appropriately named the Cherry Hill Mall was built and it was the first shopping center of its kind built east of the Mississippi River. With the construction of the mall and its commercialization, it drove the white population away from Camden as they experienced their own version of white flight. There were more skilled labor and white collar jobs being presented in Cherry Hill, which caused a lot of the population to leave. It is also worth noting that due to the mall's construction, it increased the property value of homes that were in close proximity to the mall, so that attracted many people to move to Cherry Hill. The businesses that provided stability and jobs for the community would fall on hard times. There was a lack of demand for naval vessels post-World War II as the defense budget shifted their focus towards nuclear weapons and missiles to keep up in the arms race with the Soviet Union. New York shipbuilding built aircraft carriers to include Kitty Hawk and even launched the first and only nuclear powered merchant ship and came to an agreement with the government to make nuclear submarines. Unfortunately, the construction of these projects were met with restrictions as building nuclear warships so close to a city as large as Philadelphia came with backlash. There was also mismanagement, labor unrest, and workplace accidents that led to New York shipbuilding closing for good in 1967. Camden Forge's fate was also met 11 years earlier in 1956. Victor would also eventually merge with RCA and continue its existence as a recording studio, but phonograph manufacturing fell on hard times because who in the year 2022 is listening to and recording music on a phonograph? Now, I find this old piece of technology fascinating, but as technology advances, we find efficient ways to do things, and the technology that was once considered marvels would be left in the Stone Age. Phonographs, vinyls, 8-track, Walkman, cassette, CD, iPods. At the moment, streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music, to include YouTube, are the most efficient ways to listen to your favorite music unless there's a new innovation that comes along that directly implants songs into our brains. Industries and demands change. Companies who cannot adapt and have outdated business models meet unfortunate ends. Thus, phonograph manufacturing demands dropped. RCA Victor closed down their manufacturing plant in Camden and left them dormant for many years. Campbell's Soup closed their original number one plant in Camden in 1991 and their corporate headquarters remained in Camden. Up to 1,000 jobs were lost from the Camden production plant, and production was relocated elsewhere. Studies and statistics have proven to show that areas with high levels of unemployment usually have crime trailing not too far behind. I personally tried to give my due diligence and tried to look up unemployment statistics for Camden, but unfortunately, those numbers only go as far back as 1990 from numerous sources I found. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Camden's rise to prominence with regards to crime 
started happening around the 1960s when production plants were shutting down. I'm also going to assume that unemployment was ongoing because after the 1950s, Camden's population consistently fell every following decade, many of which, as I mentioned before, went to Cherry Hill and other suburban towns in New Jersey. We can also look to two significant events that changed the reputation of Camden forever. September 2nd, 1969. There was a rumor going around that a black girl was beaten by a white police officer. At sunset, around 300 people got together several blocks near the Cooper University Hospital. These people were met with force. Shots were fired and two people were dead. Police officer Rand Chandler and 15-year-old Rose McDonald. For two days following the incident, Camden was in an uproar. Storefront windows were shattered. Homemade bombs were set off downtown and not a single person would charge for their crimes. Police investigators attributed the killings to a sniper. For those two days, Camden was in a period of civil unrest. And as soon as the population was in an uproar, it was over. For about two years. July 30th, 1971, Rafael Rodriguez Gonzalez, a Puerto Rican man, was beaten and killed by police during a traffic stop. The Hispanic population of Camden called for action to be taken against the police officers involved. Mayor Joseph Nardi declined to do so. For two weeks following the beating, officers Miller and Worrell were charged for with atrocious assault and battery, but kept their jobs. August 20th, 15 fires were set throughout the city. Three people were shot. 87 people were reported to be injured. The city gave in and the officers were suspended. The rioting subsequently stopped. Gonzalez would eventually succumb to his wounds and die. And those assault charges against Miller and Worrell would get upgraded to murder. But those charges would be downgraded to manslaughter and both officers would be acquitted by a jury. These two events left Camden worse as businesses, homes, and lives were destroyed. The politicians and city council's response to the events were poor and left a feeling of distrust towards the authority. Over the years, Camden has had its share of political corruption coming from the mayor's office. In 1981, Angelo Arichetti was convicted for accepting $500,000 from FBI agents for helping an affluent sheik gain entry to the United States as part of the app scam operation. If any of this sounds familiar, then you might have seen the 2013 film American Hustle, which was loosely based on the events that transpired in real life. Jeremy Renner played the role of Carmine Polito, who was a fictionalized version of Arachetti. Even though Christian Bale and Bradley Cooper gave great performances, Jeremy Renner was severely underrated for his role as Polito. In 1999, Arnold Webster was previously the superintendent of the Camden City Public School System. He pleaded guilty to giving himself a $20,000 bonus using school district funds after he became mayor. In the following year, 2000, the man that replaced him as mayor, Milton Milan, would be indicted on 19 different counts of corruption and would be convicted on 14 of them. Ooh, guys, get ready for this one because it's a doozy. He laundered $65,000 in drug money, orchestrated a break-in with a former business partner to get insurance money, accepted $30,000 to $50,000 in bribes from the Philadelphia Mafia boss, Ralph Natale, used money, which was supposed to be used for his campaign to finance a vacation to Puerto Rico, received two vehicles and thousands of dollars in free work on his home from city contractors, authorized a $5,000 shakedown of political contributions from Canada's public defender. Whew. Well, um, let's shift away from elected officials for a bit. For many years, Canada has been known for their crime and murder rates among the rest of the major U.S. cities. What makes Camden more dangerous is not the total amount of crime being committed per year. Instead, it is the number per capita. A city like Chicago is going to have more total crime committed per year by proxy since its population is more than 20 times than the population of Camden, New Jersey. As we can see from this chart, 
This correlates to the number of murders per 100,000 residents for Chicago, and this is certainly high. And for Camden, they don't even have 100,000 residents, so citydata.com comes up with a formula to recreate this as if they did have 100,000 residents, and murder rate does surpass that of Chicago. This is why Camden is often considered the worst primarily because of per capita. Since the 1980s, the FBI have been releasing reports of crime to the general public for American cities. Since those reports have been released, Camden's yearly violent crime rate has never dipped below 2 per 100 residents. To put it into perspective, the national average is about 0.37 per 100 residents. Camden has cemented its reputation for crime. They were known for being among the most dangerous cities in the United States by various publications. An obvious question that should be asked is, what was the police department's response to this? In 1961, the residents of Camden were unhappy with the way that the Camden Police Department were conducting their business, since they were being criticized for their mismanagement, corruption, and misappropriating of funds in addition to their high crime rates. An audit and investigation was conducted. The audit saw that Canada had a higher rate of crime than any other city in New Jersey, and the rate at which domestic violence was committed was three times the national average. The auditing team found out that the information given by Camden Police Department was either inconsistent or incomplete. For two years following the audit, 90% of the recommendations that came as a result of the audit had been implemented and Camden saved over $500,000 in funds. There has been corruption within the ranks of the police department as the most notable case took place in 2010. Four officers were arrested and convicted for different offenses. They ranged from stealing drugs and money from suspects and even framing suspects by planting drugs. In the period after the scandal went public, 200,000 criminal cases were dismissed or thrown out. Coincidentally, these were the cases that the officers were involved in. People who were being held on bail for $75,000 had their pending amount reduced to nothing and those people became free. At least 30 convictions based on charges by the officers were vacated. One of the officers, Kevin Perry, pleaded guilty to his role and took part in overturning or dismissing 185 drug cases. The damages and lawsuits added up to $3.5 million to 88 victims. The other three officers, Jason Stetzer, Antonio Figaro, and Dan Morris, pleaded guilty to their crimes and were given prison sentences. Now that last story may be satisfying to hear as those authority figures are being held responsible for their actions and punished accordingly. But the fact that this happened is unfortunate to hear and as mentioned earlier in the video, there are three other instances of Camden Mayors, the person who has the most authority and influence in a city acts just as corrupt as these police officers. We can look at history and see why corruption happens and why the general population fell on such hard times, but on YouTube, or in general for that matter, no one seems to care. We see people at their lowest points and say to ourselves, thank God that's not me and I don't have to live there, and go about our day. We do this without thinking about the communities and neighborhoods that got this way. With this video, I hope that you learned a thing or two because I certainly did while I was researching to make this video. Now why did I make it? On YouTube, you can look up Camden and see countless videos on crime, poverty, and gangs, but nothing about history. So I said, Fine, I'll do it myself. I did the research, wrote a script, did a voiceover, edited, and published the video. Why? Because nobody cares. In part two of this series, I'm going to talk about revitalization efforts that came in the form of a baseball team. Thanks for watching.